All right, well, here it is. We are finally doing it. Our walk around of our 19 foot six titanium hardcore, our new van for 2023. Can't wait to show you this, but first there's a couple of things we should get out of the way. Number one is, why did it take us so long to film a walk around? We picked this up about five or six weeks ago, so why so long for a walk around? Well, basically we wanted to test it. We wanted to put stuff in it. We wanted to see what we liked, what we didn't like. We wanted to give it a thorough shakedown before we gave any recommendations or formed our own opinions. We did not want this to be an unboxing video. We have lived in this all our gears in it. We've worked out the tips and the tricks and uh, we, yeah, we really just wanted to give you as much value as possible out of this video. Yeah, we didn't think there was any value in just moving into it and tell you what we liked and we didn't. Uh, it took us a while to figure all that out. So we figured most of that out. Obviously that's an evolving process, but we feel like now's a good time to share with you our initial thoughts and how life has been in the van for the last little while. Second thing we want to get out of the way is what is our relationship with titanium? We want to make sure that you guys have all the information so you can uh, take this information with any biases taken into account. Uh, we don't have a sponsorship or anything like that with titanium. We didn't get a free caravan from titanium. Uh, we spent a long time finding the right builder to build what is our dream home, our dream off-grid home. Titanium uh, fit the bill. They were able to do a lot of what we wanted to do. They were the right people that we wanted to work with. But yes, we did pay for this caravan. Uh, the, the guys at Titanium did look after us, but uh, this van, yeah, I mean, it cost more than our zone that we sold. So. Take that into account, whatever bias you think there might be, because there's a good chance this video might sound a little bit like an ad for Titanium. Uh, the only reason for that is because we love it. Um, we helped design it, we were very involved in the process. We had an absolute ball. Uh, the process with Titanium building this couldn't have been better. I mean, I, we, we're blown away with how, how well that process went. Uh, so that's why we probably sound a little bit like fanboys, because, or and fanboy and girl. Uh, because we are, we're big fans of the van. I think they've done a stellar job. So we just wanted to get that out of the way because uh, I know that's probably in a lot of the back of a lot of people's minds. Um, and we just wanted to make sure you didn't think uh, we got a free caravan. On that though, if any of you out there know anyone that's giving away free caravans, please let us know uh, because we would love one. And uh, yeah, we had we we haven't heard of uh, anyone getting free caravans. Out no, there. I For think some it's reason, a very this, common misconception. There's this idea out there that you get a couple of thousand followers and uh, hit up uh, a caravan manufacturer and they'll give away uh, you know $150,000 plus caravan. Doesn't quite work like that, unfortunately. I'm sure if it did work like that, there'd be a lot more people doing it. Yeah, yeah, everyone would be doing this. Yeah. All right, so without further ado, let's kick into it. There are a lot of things we want to cover in this uh, walk around. This is just going to be the external of the van. We're going to be releasing a video in the very near future of the inside. Uh, as I said, there's a lot to cover. We just think breaking up the videos just makes it a little bit easier to get through all that information without boring you to death. There are some things on this that are quite standard across the manufacturing of caravans in this country. So we'll breeze over those. We'll try and just focus on what's different, what's unique about this van. Um, compared to other titaniums, but also other caravans in the general market. So I think that's where we're gonna try and the angle we're coming at this from, because uh, there's a lot of exciting stuff that we've been able to incorporate into this that we're really keen to share with you. So let's stop yabbering. Let's dive in. Let's it's dive gonna be a long it. video. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> right, I'm kicking things off. Everything up here is pretty well standard. DO35 hitch, handbrake, uh, 12 pin plug, Anderson that takes the vehicle charge into the batteries. We do have two spare Andersons up here. This one's an output in case we want to run any accessories or an outdoor fridge, anything like that. And there's the red one there that does our solar input if we want to run a solar blanket, anything like that as well. Chassis, we've, this time we've gone with a painted chassis instead of the gal chassis. Main reason for that is just to save weight. We've also done the truss chassis which splits the chassis rails um, and, and makes the floor a lot higher gives us a flat floor inside with uh, a lot bigger storage capacity with no wheel arches protruding. It does, on the downside, make the van a little bit taller. See that as a pro or con, depending on what you're after. Big thing you'll notice up here on the drawbar on the A-frame is no gas bottles. We've gone gas-free with this caravan. Uh, we decided to eliminate gas for a few reasons. Uh, main one being just ease of uh, access to getting gas, getting gas bottle refills and things like that, particularly in the remote areas, can be a little bit tricky sometimes. We also find the idea of just having one fuel source, diesel only, so we use diesel hot water, diesel for heating. Uh, obviously our car runs on diesel, 
carry spare diesel. It's uh, multi-purpose and we can use it for a variety of things. Uh, also a bit safer and it also eliminates the need for gas alarms, gas ventilation, all that sort of stuff in the van. So a few pros there. Downside being you need a bigger battery system. We predominantly cooked on electric with the previous van anyway, uh, so we were quite happy to stick with pure electric cooking for this van. All right, let's move around the side and keep move, making our way down. So pretty standard affair again, draw bar tap on there. Um, big front toolbox. What we're able to do with this van, although this is a hardcore, which is sort of the mid-range with the titanium vans, uh, we were able to incorporate a lot of the features from their flagship, the hard, hardcore ATX, including this front toolbox, which is able to fit because of the high front, what they call the high front, which is means that the vertical part of the van of the body uh, is a lot taller before it starts to rake back. Allows them to lift the bed, gives us the bigger tunnel boot storage, but also this lovely big toolbox. Jerry can holder there, that's for any spare diesel we want to carry for the diesel hot water and heating system. Uh, the tank is in there for that. This storage at the back, great for chairs and tables and things like that. Um, we use that, I mean, we don't normally carry a camp table, but that's left over from the Brisbane Caravan Show, Stratus lent us that for our display at the show. We've got to return that to them, but normally just our camp chairs fit in there. Also has these awesome big deep drawers either side, um, handy for all those little bits and pieces, wheel chocks and wheel braces and um, spare electrical, like our electrical lead and spare bits and pieces. Um, draw down the bottom here, designed for a generator slide, but same as our old van, we use that for the kids' outdoor toys and fishing gear and things like that. We'll show the other side, but it's very similar when we get around there. Moving right back, as I said, the bigger tunnel boot makes it obviously more storage, but also just easier to get. I don't think there's any need to show in there. There's not much in there that's <laughs> exciting. Higher tunnel boot, as I said, it gives you more storage, but also just easier access to get into in there to get into that stuff. Um, I think it's a no-brainer. I think it's really, really good. We were stoked to be able to do that. Because we've got east-west bed inside, this being a 19-foot-6 bunk van, east-west bed is by far the best configuration. We're loving the east-west, but we'll talk more about that when we do the interior walk-around. What that means, though, is that we don't have the lift-up bed inside like the traditional walk-around beds. Um, most of our underbed storage is accessed from outside here, apart from a couple of drawers. So we've got this sort of half-tunnel boot, I call it. goes about halfway across the van. What we've put in here, actually, before I open that, the brief for this caravan was to maximise our time off grid. We want to be able to stay off grid for as long as possible without having to go and resupply. Anyone who's done any time off grid will tell you there's two big things that you need for that, power and water. Now, power these days is getting easier and easier to uh, overcome with solar and lithium batteries and all that sort of thing. But what we did on this van was make maximise the solar, maximise the power system, but we also wanted to overcome this issue of how do you get better access to water when you're traveling off grid not with a magic some sort of magic system but with a desalinator so we are going to be running a reverse osmosis desalinator unit adapted from the marine industry these have been used in yachts and in the marine industry for decades and we've adapted a system by teaming up with the guys from watermakers australia uh, for caravans so in this it's not very exciting at the moment it's all in the crate but when we install it we're going to go through in heaps more detail everything about this but if you are interested in going to check out the one that we're using i'll leave a link in the a link in the description below and the guys at watermakers australia are offering you guys a discount as well if you want to go and buy one of those we bought this one ourselves but they just wanted to help our audience out which is fantastic and we're all about that in behind that, you can't see it, but is our under bunk air conditioner. As I said, we wanted to maximize roof space for solar. So we did away with the rooftop air con and we've done a Truma Sphere underbed air con. Uh, again, we'll be doing an install video on that shortly. Moving further behind, we've got, these are our two water fill points. We've got two tanks in this 170 litre main tank and we've added an 85 litre sub tank to that. So we've got about 250 litres of water, give or take. Very similar to what we had in the old van. But with that desalinator, we didn't feel like we needed to go crazy with the amount of tankage that we had, and it would cut into our payload anyway. So we're, we're really keen to try out that desalinator, sit somewhere on a beach, pump water out of a creek or off the out of the ocean, and desalinate that, make fresh water. It's gonna be unreal. Stick around for that, because we've got some cool plans coming up of spending some really long periods off-grid without a resupply. Uh, so 250 litres of water, that's plenty for us for a week without a resupply, 10 days if we really stretch it out. 240 volt inlet, pretty standard affair on a caravan these days. Um, to match the 
grey painted chassis, which is actually a colour bond colour. It's called Monument. We've done the same with the checker plate, which matches in nicely with the cladding above. We think it really looks really, really good, just a little bit different to the standard black. On the off-grid side of things, water was one, power was the other. This is actually our power system in behind this door. So using up the dead space behind the fridge, we've been able to work with titanium and Enerdrive to put all the charging gear in this massive cabinet. How good does that look? Now it doesn't just look good, but it allows us to have a maximum charging rates from the solar array that we've put on the roof. So how much solar have we managed to get up there? Up on our roof in a 19 foot six van, we have fit eight 200 watt solar panels. I can't take full credit for that 1600 watts of solar though. Nick at Titanium is an absolute legend and he managed to squeeze eight solar panels on a 19 foot van. Outstanding effort. Now obviously we did delete rooftop aircon and we also deleted our roof hatches because we don't have gas in the van. We also deleted our TV antenna and all rooftop antennas. All that is up there, solar panels, a caravan and an exhaust for the shower and the bathroom. The rest is solar. That amount of solar though, you need to make sure your charges are up to scratch and that's why we went with the Enerdrive system again. Uh, that as well as the fact we had in the last van and it was flawless uh, and that they've got a tech support backup um, Australia wide and I can ring a number and I get someone in Brisbane and fault find with them because they designed this entire board. They also build the board in Brisbane. They bench test it in Brisbane before it goes out to titanium minimizes faults and makes faults much easier to detect and track down if they should occur. Although I don't think that's gonna happen. So we've got two MPPT controllers from Enerdrive, 40 amps each, taking care of uh, four panels each. 2,600 watt inverter, that's the same inverter we had in our last van. Did the job, it runs absolutely everything we need to run. We didn't see the need to go any bigger. 40 amp DC DC charger, because our solar runs completely independently through those solar controllers, this DC DC is freed up to only handle our alternator charge from the vehicle. That maximizes our charging when we're driving and we can see uh, upwards of 130 amps coming in when we're getting good solar conditions and we've got the alternator charge running through the battery. So that really helps us to regenerate our 600 amps of battery. Two 300 amp BTECs from Enerdrive, uh, means that we've got ample power. I really think in a gas-free van, 600 amps is gonna be plenty. The old van, we had two 200 amp batteries, so 400 amps. And with gas as a backup, we found that was ample, but we were often feeling like we could have done with more solar. We've now more, and more than taken care of that, and we've got plenty of solar there. So we're really looking forward to that, but already early days in the last few weeks living in the van, it's just crushing it. Even in the winter, in substandard solar conditions, it's, it's gonna be really, really good. Obviously, we've got the 60 amp um, AC charger as well, and all our fusing, all our uh, circuit breakers and everything like that is in here very easily, nicely laid out. The ventilation in here, uh, is just far better than if it's under a bed or under a bench seat and cooler chargers operate much better. Chargers when they get hot don't work very well. The Enerdrive system is just hard to beat when it comes to that service and warranty backup. Uh, the charging capability is, is beyond what we could have done with another system. Um, and yeah, I just think, like I said, we've had it before, so we stuck with it. It's working really, really well. Another advantage with this is that Enerdrive is owned now by Dometic, as many of you would know. So tuck right up the top there is the fridge compressor. They've tested all this, it all works well together and that ventilation helps the fridge and obviously the electrical gear. And right up the top there that you can't really see on camera, although if Liz points the camera right up, you might see the roof cowling oh, yeah. from the back. So right up there is, that's the roof cowling. There's three thermo fans that trigger when the temperature gets over a certain amount and draws all that hot air up and through. If you can't tell, I'm bloody stoked with it. Uh, very excited to have this in the van. I was worried about dust ingress, but from the dust testing we've done so far, it's not an issue. The caravan obviously helps with that, but not a speck of dust inside, which is just unbelievably good. Last thing before we run around the back and I'll show you, oh, don't give them a sneak peek, Liz, sneak around. <laughs> Last thing before we sneak around the back is just tucked up under here at the rear of our bunks. This is our bunk side. Uh, in the back here is our Truma D6, which is, which is that hot water diesel heater in one unit. Uh, very similar unit to what we had in the previous van, although that was the gas version. Um, so far, diesel heating, really, really quiet. We can hardly hear it, and when it's heating hot water, um, yes, it is a tank style hot water, so similar to our old one, it does take a little while to heat up. That's the compromise we're prepared to make because it gives us 10 litres of hot water, 
then it runs out and then we don't use any more water. So then it saves us water when we're off grid. <laughs> this was Titanium's idea to put the D6 back here, tucked away under the dead space, under the rear bunk that you can't access because of the uh, wardrobe and the drawers and everything under the kids' bunks. So in generally in vans, like in our last van, that was literally a dead empty space that wasn't utilized. So really cool that they've been able to utilize that space. Because of bugs. Yeah. Bugs, where are you going? All right, so this is again, another one of our favorite parts of the van, this rear bar that Titanium have come up with. I love it. It's finally someone's innovated and come up with a new idea and just finishes off the back of the van perfectly. We've got two jerry can holders in here, which are sunk into the bar, which I think looks absolutely unreal. And then we've got the firewood rack, which is great for firewood in, but also great for bringing rubbish and wet and dirty gear out again. A nice big drawer in here that I use for all my hoses, hot water, um, hot water, grey water hose, fresh water hoses, everything like that fits really well in there. That is the only place we found we did get dust in though when we did our dust test, that isn't dust proof, but with what we keep in there, that's not really an issue for us. Um, spare tire, obviously, one spare tire I think is plenty and another jerry can holder there. So really, really happy with how it's all come up. There is a bit of a weight penalty here as in it, it, it does weigh probably 20 or 30 kilos more, I think, than the standard rear bar setup, but worth it in my opinion. I think it looks absolutely unreal and just sets the van off perfectly. So yeah, wool fabrication, that's a business owned by Titanium. So they've got full control over this and this is their first uh, crack at this and I reckon they're only gonna get better. So really excited to see what they come up with there. All right, moving further forward, Standard sort of affair, the rollout awning, Aussie Traveller, exactly the same one we had on the old van, although this is a black one to match the black van. Fold down table, again, pretty standard. Um, fold down table, we think we're gonna go with a second one, uh, just to maximize this space. We've got room there for another one. We love using these outside for cooking, particularly now we're electric only cooking. We can bring the portable induction plate out, the Thermomix, whatever we're doing, and have plenty of space out here. In here is what they call the entertainment hatch, although for us it's just the charging station. Um, we fit in there the uh, Starlink router. This is our airing up gear for using the line out from the airbags to pump up the tyres. Savvy level is going to get installed there. I haven't installed that yet. I'll tell you more about that when I do, but that's a, a digital level that helps us to level up the van when we're at camp, which is made even easier by this time we've gone with the uh, remote uh, airbags. We didn't have this before in the old van, uh, which just I don't know. Now you give it the eyeball test. Yeah, it's not it's not a uh, the necessary thing to have remote airbags, but it's kind of fun to have, and I'm really enjoying having that. So suspension wise, with this one, we did go with the Cruise Master XT suspension again. We've stuck with the airbags, as I said. Only this time, we've upgraded to the disc brakes. The big advantage to the disc brakes is their performance. They far outperform the drums that we had before. They're an electric over hydraulic disc brake, uh, particularly on the long steep descents at the bottom of the hill, we don't find we've got anywhere near the brake fade we had in the drums. I've been told they're better in the off-road dusty conditions as well, but time will tell on that. Downsides being obviously cost, they're more expensive, uh, but also, you can't have ESC with them. Um, that was a compromise I was willing to make with the second van, but that's something you'd have to weigh up yourself. Um, but yeah, obviously having the, all the Cruise Master controls in here is super handy and, and with the airbag um, remote. The other remote we've got in here is uh, the digital switching. So the whole van is digitally switched. So I can turn all the outside lights on and off from the remote, including those front and rear spotlights, which Again, certainly not a must have, but it's been a super handy little feature that we've really enjoyed. The wheels we've gone with are the standard ones offered by Titanium now. They offer method wheels from standard, so uh, we've stuck with them, 16 inch methods, which is pretty wicked. We may end up changing them when we build our 76 Cruiser, not too sure yet. We'll figure that out as we go forward because I do like to match them where possible, uh, at the very least the tyre size, if not the rims as well, but we'll see how that goes. We'll stick with those methods for now. Aussie Traveller door, um, again, the, the split sort of design like we had on the old van, but I actually prefer this Aussie Traveller door over the Dometic one we had. Um, it just shuts a lot nicer and it's just a bit more user friendly than the old one. Um, it has just the standard sort of open and close when we're at camp and then we can turn the handle and it pressurized locks it. It sort of sucks the door in and that's for travel and for keeping dust out. Obviously, same sort of split design as the old one and we've got midgy proof mesh there as well as um, as well as the security screen, which is standard, which is pretty awesome. One other cool thing that Titanium have done is the way that they've latched the door when it's open. Um, obviously we've got this window here, so uh, the door can't stay in its standard when that window's open, but they've put a second latch on here, which I really like. Um, and I think is a really cool idea just to keep the door open at that 90 degrees and let us have that window uh, open, which obviously you want as much airflow as you can get. 
Speaking of windows, we've installed our PPF window protection on these windows in this van. If you haven't heard, we have finally launched our PPF. Uh, in, we've teamed up with Bushwraps in partnership with them. This is an idea that we came up with over two years ago with our zone put on that van, tested for two years. It is incredibly good at protecting these windows that are susceptible to damage from tree branch scratches and from cleaning and from things like that. They're quite a soft polycarbonate and they will scratch very easily. So it's an inexpensive solution to be able to get a DIY kit for your van. They're currently available for the Eurovision windows. They'll very soon be available for these Ranger windows as well. We've also got Dometic and a heap of other brands of windows coming out. So. Check out the link in the description below. Use our discount code as well. Get yourself 10% off and you can buy the, the uh, DIY kit. Comes with everything you need to do it. We're so excited to finally have this to market. Um, and yeah, got to say thanks to Maddie from Bushwraps for, for trusting in us and believing that this was, a, this was a really good idea and that there was a market for it. Um, so jump in and support that. It really does support us. And, and it's like I said, it's just a great product. And we're so proud that, uh, that that's now available on the market. We're also going to be doing it for the doors. They'll be available very soon for these Aussie Traveller doors, as well as the hourglass shaped uh, Dometic doors. Um, yeah, but if we don't stock the window brand that you have in your caravan, send us an email or put an inquiry through on Bushwraps. Let us know and we're going to be templating as many as we possibly can and we're going to try and cover the entire market in as little time as possible. So that's enough about that. But if you want to know more, um, hit me up, leave us a comment below, let us know and we can do a whole video on that if you like. Um, there are instructional videos on the website though to show you all about it and how to get it installed on your van. All right, so moving further forward, we've got two hatches here. Now this isn't standard by titanium. This is our standard tunnel boot that goes right through to the other side. This one we added recently, we just got a heap of work done by our mates at Suncoast Caravan Service, uh, including installing the underbunk aircon and this new hatch, which gives us access to a new storage area we've created, which uses the dead space at the base of our bed. So it's not very deep. It's only about half, about probably three or 400 mil deep, but it gives us shoe storage and just wine and beer storage, the important stuff. <laughs> stuff what, you want good access to yeah, quickly. <laughs> the, things you, the things you want to be able to get to hand nice and quickly like booze and shoes. Now, <laughs> it's a work in progress at the moment. It's not finished, but this the idea is uh, that we'll be able to get outside and inside access to this storage area. So there'll be a lift off lid inside as well as this external hatch so you can get your shoes or your booze uh, from either inside or out, which we think is going to be a super handy feature and solves the issue of having shoes just lying around on the floor or kicked around out here on the ground it's right next to the door we think it's just a perfect solution the idea was a bit of a uh, well the idea originally came from Amy from four boys in a caravan who who had this idea of building in the end of the bed so rather than just a foot locker like a lot of vans we've gone full height to the top of the bed base we'll show you more in the interior walk around but then we came up with the idea of adding this external hatch as well we think it's going to be a game changer but let us know what you think um, could this solve the age-old problem of where do you put your shoes when you're caravanning we think it's a Bloody cracker. I can't get that latch to shut. I'm also not a fan of these latches. In the downsides is um, all these hatches have different keys uh, and we don't like the chrome locks, but we've got a solution for that and it's coming soon. We'll let you know more about it. I'll tell them now. Oh, we're going, to be, we're going to be doing what they call the one key system. So if you haven't heard of one key, we'll be giving more details about it. Beautiful couple from down at Port Stephens on the New South Wales coast. Um, they've come up with this idea. He's a locksmith by trade and he's come up with solving one of the big problems for caravanners, which is uh, so many bloody keys. If you see the bunch of keys you get, um, our old van wasn't too bad. This one's even worse. Uh, but the idea of having one key that does everything, including padlocks, is pretty awesome. And we're going to be integrating that into the van very soon. More on that shortly. All right, back to the front, and uh, obviously this front toolbox, as I said, is pretty much a mirror image of the other side. This is the big space where we keep our chairs. Another nice big drawer up on top here. And then down here, that's our outdoor mat and our Starlink dish. Now that's normally a barbecue slide. We took that out because we don't have a barbecue since we deleted gas. We haven't changed barbecues to an electric, and we're thinking we might not. We're still uh, tossing up some ideas for how we're gonna do outdoor cooking. The tear weight of this van came in at 2880. I know a lot of you are gonna have that question. So yeah, it's a pretty heavy van for 90 foot six, but it is full off-road obviously, and we're able to bring a lot into that uh, 90 foot six. We've jammed a lot in there. The solar in particular is quite heavy. Uh, it's a bit heavier than we wanted it to be, but we'll make it work. And I think it's worth it for the trade-offs that we've been able to have. Uh, so far, there's not really a lot we'd change with it. Uh, there's really only a few things um, that 
yeah, very minor things like the latches on the on the hatches, like I said, that we would want to change, which is a solvable issue. Um, dust into the rear drawer, not a major issue. There's really not a lot we'd change just yet, but it is still early days. What we have found though, is that the build quality on this is superior to anything we've experienced before. Um, the, we just haven't had to touch a thing. Like it's been six weeks living in it and we've done some horribly rough roads. I don't know if you've driven around outback New South Wales lately, but it is horrendous, the quality of the road and I've honestly not had to pick up a screwdriver or anything to, to fix, adjust or replace anything. It's been incredible. It's, it's absolutely exceeded my expectations. So yeah, so far, cannot fault it. Um, really, really excited to see how it performs over time though and test it out. You guys know, we'll give you that honest feedback as we continue. And if things do break and go wrong, this is where you're gonna find out about it. So yeah, looking forward to showing you all that. But, but yeah, that's about it. We can't really tell you much more at this stage. Hey guys, if you like this content or you want to see what we get up to, go check out the rest of our channel and like and subscribe. It really does help uh, the channel grow and show this amazing stuff to more people. So we'd really appreciate... Hang on. Yeah, that, sounds, you... that sounds like desperate. <laughs> no, nah, we're not desperate. But if you... <laughs> Just if you like it, give it some love. Yeah. Give it some love. Yeah. And l let other people know that you like it too. It is the only way yeah. we can continue to do this is with that support. Uh, it's only a small uh, little thing that you can do and it costs you nothing, but it does help us out and it does mean this content will continue. All right, guys, that pretty much wraps up. Oh, there's that front spotlight that I was talking about before. They're super handy, the front and rear spotlights. That one in particular for just lighting up for when we're hitching up or unhitching in the dark. Not that we do that often, but when you do do, it is really handy. And just getting gear out of the back of the car because the car is generally parked in front. Um, rear one's good when you're backing into camp of a night time. Not something I thought I'd like to have on a caravan, but it's turned out to be really handy. So, so stoked to have that and all the other awesome features we've been able to bring into our Titanium. We hope you've enjoyed this walk around. Leave us a comment, let us know below. What do you think? Game changer? Uh, have we what raised- What do you think about the D-cell? I love, the D-cell on eight is gonna be next level. I just cannot wait to be sitting on a beach. Oh, here's my idea, right? So I'm gonna sit on a beach, parked up for as long as I bloody well want, and I'll be able to make fresh water and trade it with my neighbours for fresh milk for the coffee and all beer. <laughs> It'll be just like having a cow with it. Yeah, so, um, yeah, we're really keen to test out this desalinator to really see how far we can push getting it off grid for as long and explore places that you normally have to only just breeze past because you haven't got enough water to stay and really get into the guts of them. Yeah, looking forward to that. Let us know what you think of all the ideas we put into the van. What do you think? Uh, we're absolutely stoked with it. We're gonna be living off grid in luxury. Heaps more to show you on the inside as well. I know you've had a sneak peek of the dishwasher <laughs> install already, but there's a few other sneaky little ideas <laughs> that we've brought into the inside. As I said, that's coming up soon. Uh, can't wait to show you that. Uh, thanks to everyone who supported our push-up challenge that we're doing this month as well. We are still pushing out those push-ups and uh, really proud to be supporting Movember again and raising awareness and important funds for mental health and for men's health in this country. So thank you again for all those of you who've done that. If you haven't, Again, there'll be a link, a lot of links in the description below. So many links. Jump down there and throw a donation if you can. Every dollar really does help. If a couple of dollars, if that's what you can uh, make happen, we would still uh, very much appreciate that. So thank you. All right, guys, that's right, going to wrap this up. one up. We will see you next Sunday. We'll see you next Sunday. Bye. See ya. I tried to get Simon to put our 20 litre port barrel that's sitting at my mum and dad's in there and he said no. What do you yeah, reckon? Do you reckon we should bring the port barrel? I don't know if you've seen where we go, but I don't <laughs> think a 20 litre port barrel will survive. I do want to bring it though. Oh, yeah.